Justin Trudeau just got absolutely blasted by Xi Jinping to his face at the G20. Watch this. Everything we discuss is then leaked to the paper. That's not appropriate. And that's not how the way the conversation was conducted. If there is if there is sincerity on your part, free and open and frank dialogue, and that is what we will continue to have. Welcome everyone to Ratioed. My name is Harrison Faulkner. What you just saw there was Xi Jinping absolutely dressing down Justin Trudeau, scolding Justin Trudeau so badly that he had to run off to the bathroom and wipe away his tears after that embarrassing, embarrassing interaction. We've got the entire reaction from the internet. We've got international headlines, Canadian headlines, and some of the funniest reactions to that video. Drop a like on the video, share it around, help us out by subscribing to the True North YouTube channel. The common question for the episode is this. Do you think Xi Jinping would have treated any other Canadian prime minister that way? The way that he just looked down on Justin Trudeau and absolutely gave it to him. Do you think Xi Jinping would have that interaction with any other previous Canadian prime minister? Let me know in the comments what you think. All right, let's get into it. So you saw a quick little teaser of that that interaction between Xi Jinping and Justin Trudeau, but I want to show you the entire video that is basically breaking the internet right now. It has millions of views on Twitter. It's absolutely dominating headlines around the world. Every single media outlet in the world is reporting on this interaction, and it just makes Canada look so weak. It's, it's Justin Trudeau doing his weird little sort of finger-holding posture, nodding his head away at Xi Jinping as Xi Jinping basically tells him that you are being disrespectful, you're not acting like a statesman. Now, say what you will about either leader, but it's pretty clear in this interaction about who is in charge. And I can tell you for sure, it does not make Justin Trudeau look strong. It does not make Canada look strong either. Watch the entire interaction between Justin Trudeau and Xi Jinping. Everything we discuss is then leaked to the paper. That's not appropriate. And that's not how the way the conversation was conducted. If there is sincerity on your part, free and open and frank dialogue, and that is what we will continue to have, we will continue to look to work constructively together, but there will be things we will disagree on, and we will have to continue. Let's create the conditions first. There's just so much to get into with that clip. It's actually a really fascinating insight into the two world leaders and getting a real up close look at how they talk. And I have to say, I mean, this just made Canada look so weak. You've got Justin Trudeau sitting there standing there bowing his head to Xi Jinping as Xi Jinping basically tells him, you leaked our conversation to the press. That's not appropriate. That's not how, you know, these conversations need to be had. And then you have Justin Trudeau saying, oh, well, in Canada, we believe in free and open and frank dialogue, and we're going to continue to try and work together. Like he's just not dominant. He's not laying down the rules to Xi Jinping the way Xi Jinping is doing it to him. And I think that's just, that just comes off to these world leaders. I really do believe that these world leaders just don't respect Justin Trudeau. And, and by proxy, they just don't respect Canada very much. My favorite part of that clip is, of course, the end, when Xi Jinping basically gives him the get lost handshake. Like, yeah, I'll shake your hand, but get out of my face, get lost. And then Justin Trudeau scurries away, whispers something to Katie Telford, and then he runs off to the bathroom like, like some whimpering, sad shell of a man. It's embarrassing for us. It's such an embarrassing look, and the world is just mocking him for it. But I want to just break down the conversation that took place prior to this one, the one that Xi Jinping took issue with Justin Trudeau, because they had a previous conversation the day before, also on the sidelines of the G20 summit. Xi Jinping has been meeting with world leaders in formal settings throughout the G20, doing something he doesn't usually do, which is actually hold formal meetings. But of course, not one with Canada. He doesn't show the same respect to Canada as he does for other countries. In fact, the informal sidebar chat between Justin Trudeau and Xi Jinping was the first time the world leaders had spoken to each other for three and a half years. Now, Xi Jinping, like I said, was holding formal meetings with other world leaders, but Canada wasn't on the list. We're not important enough for Xi Jinping to hold a private conversation with. In fact, Canada got snubbed by Argentina 
France and the United States. You can understand Xi Jinping wanting to meet with Joe Biden, but really Xi Jinping meeting with the Argentina leader over Justin Trudeau, I think that speaks volumes about where Canada is in the world pecking order. So Xi Jinping takes issue with Justin Trudeau leaking the conversations of their informal sidebar chat to the Canadian press. And actually, let's just go into what those conversations were. This is how the CBC reports on the informal conversation that Justin Trudeau and Xi Jinping had on Tuesday. In the brief discussion between the two leaders who have been at odds over trade and the arrest and detainment of two Canadians, Trudeau raised concerns about media reports that China covertly funded 11 candidates in the 2019 federal election. So there you go, that was what apparently ticked Xi Jinping off. The fact that Justin Trudeau leaked to the Canadian press that Justin Trudeau raised the issue of China covertly funding 11 federal candidates in the 2019 election. It's interesting though, because you see when Justin Trudeau was asked by press after his interaction with Xi Jinping, after his humiliation from Xi Jinping, he was asked if in that previous meeting, he had brought up the election interference that China was allegedly engaging in in Canada. This was his response. Notice, he doesn't actually say he brought that up. Was the CBC not reporting the truth here? Following up. So did you raise election interference with Xi Jinping? I raised the issue of interference with our citizens uh, and expressed that it's important that we continue to have dialogue about that. Now, speaking of those 11 Communist Party funded candidates in Canada's elections, why do we go through that story again? That was reported by Global News at the beginning of November. And it's just incredible. It's just incredible the depths to which China's Communist Party have gone to infiltrate the Canadian government. Canadian intelligence officials have warned Prime Minister Justin Trudeau that China has allegedly been targeting Canada with a vast campaign of foreign interference, which includes funding a clandestine network of at least 11 federal candidates running in the 2019 election, according to global news sources. Based on recent information from the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, CSIS, those efforts allegedly involve payments through intermediaries to candidates affiliated with the Chinese Communist Party, placing agents into the offices of MPs in order to influence policy, seeking to co-opt and corrupt former Canadian officials to gain leverage in Ottawa, and mounting aggressive campaigns to punish Canadian politicians whom the People's Republic of China views as threats to its interests. And just last week, an alleged Chinese spy was charged by the RCMP who works at Hydro-Quebec for stealing trade secrets. 35-year-old Yusheng Wang is facing four charges including fraud for obtaining trade secrets, breach of trust, obtaining trade secrets, and unauthorized use of a computer. The crimes are believed to have taken place between February 2018 and October 2022. Again, just yet another example of China's dirty games in Canada. But it doesn't just stop there. Remember that story about Chinese police stations operating in Canada? Three of them, in fact, operating in the GTA? And last but not least, to me, what I think is one of the most disgraceful acts Justin Trudeau has done since becoming prime minister, and believe me, the list is quite long. It was when Justin Trudeau invited the People's Liberation Army, the jackboots of Xi Jinping's Communist Party, to train on Canadian soil, to train at an Ontario Canadian Armed Forces military base. Like I said, the rest of the world has been reporting on this dressing down from Xi Jinping to Justin Trudeau, and they've been kind of just piling on to the humiliation, embarrassing Justin Trudeau with these headlines. Take a look at this from the Express. Xi Jinping humiliates Justin Trudeau in devastating public dressing down. This one is from The Guardian. Xi angrily rebukes Trudeau over leaks to media about Canada-China relations. One of the fun things to do whenever you're reading a story about a China-related issue is to read the Chinese state propaganda journalists. I always look at the Chinese state propaganda journalists as like the major leagues of propaganda, and then Justin Trudeau's bought and paid for legacy media as the minor leagues. Like those minor leaguers at the CBC, Global News, and uh, CTV News. They probably look up to the journalists at the South China Morning Post and the Global Times as the real all-stars, the major leaguers of real state-funded propaganda. We're going to take a look at some of these headlines. So this is what the South China Morning Post, one of the most popular Chinese state-funded propaganda outlets, had to report on the interaction between Xi Jinping and Justin Trudeau. Xi Jinping chides Canadian leader Justin Trudeau on G20 sidelines for media leaks after meeting. The rare public expression of displeasure between two major leaders came after Xi and Trudeau held their first face-to-face -face meeting in three years on Tuesday. The informal conversation, which lasted 10 minutes, was followed by Canadian media reports claiming the Prime Minister had raised 
quote, serious concerns over China's alleged funding of 11 candidates in Canada's 2019 elections. Oh yeah, serious concerns, as though that definitely isn't happening, right? China's definitely not funding communist-backed candidates in Canada's elections. That would never happen, right? Anyway, here's Global Times reporting on the meeting prior on, on Justin Trudeau and Xi Jinping's first meeting in three years. Look at how Global Times glowingly reports on their interaction. Finding common ground while managing differences key for China-Canada relations to develop. She tells Trudeau at G20 encounter, China-Canada relations are currently at a crossroads and the key to where relations between the two countries will go lies in whether Canada can return to a rational and pragmatic track and view China objectively and fairly, according to the Chinese foreign ministry. Ah, that's right. So China-Canada relations will only get better when Canada decides to return to a rational and pragmatic track. Now keep in mind, this isn't the first time that Xi Jinping has embarrassed Justin Trudeau on the world stage. Remember this interaction when Xi Jinping wouldn't even acknowledge Justin Trudeau? Please look in the direction of the photographer in front of the flags. Near something near Kardashava, please look to the back in the direction but there is perhaps no better moment caught on camera displaying Justin Trudeau's weakness towards the dictatorship of China. Remember, at a ladies' night in 2015, when Justin Trudeau was running to become prime minister, he was asked by one of those attendees at the ladies' night what country he most admired. Even with Sun TV watching for any slip, he was asked which country he most admired and referred to China. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime and say, we need to go green as fast as we need to start, you know, investing in solar. I mean, there is a flexibility that I know Stephen Harper must dream about of having a dictatorship that he could do everything he wanted. Uh, that I find quite interesting. Ah, yes, the basic dictatorship that was able to turn their economy around on a dime. That's the country Trudeau most admires. Go figure with that one. Ratio of the week time. The winner this week is CTV News. Now, after that humiliation in Indonesia, after that awful, awful interaction with Xi Jinping, Justin Trudeau needed his state-funded propaganda outlets to prop him up with some puffy headlines, make him look good, make him look like a strong leader. So what did CTV News write? They wrote an absurd headline straight out of the South China Morning Post, straight out of the Global Times, like the, making the Chinese state propagandists proud with this one. Take a look at this tweet. G20 leaders end summit with pledges aligned with Trudeau government's agenda. Oh yeah, I'm sure they did. I'm sure the I'm sure the G20 leaders all pledged along along with Justin Trudeau's agenda. They all said, "What's Justin Trudeau doing? What is Justin Trudeau doing because we need to do exactly what Trudeau is doing. It's obviously working for Canada." So we're going to do whatever strong world leader Justin Trudeau is doing with his climate agenda. What a complete, utter joke. In fact, the article itself basically summarizes Justin Trudeau's entire trip in the G20, including right at the very top, the dressing down from Xi Jinping. Now, at the time of this recording, the CTV news suite has 849 replies to 377 likes. We had to give it to them because the headline was just so, so ridiculous. This person writes, CTV is in full propaganda mode today. This is by far the weirdest, creepiest, most confusing news article headline I've ever read. It's not that confusing when you understand exactly how this works. Justin Trudeau pays off the media and the media operate as state-funded propagandists. It's quite simple, actually. This person just writes, this is the best parody account on Twitter. Perfect way to end it. CTV News is the best parody account on Twitter. I'll catch you tomorrow on Fake News Friday. My name is Harrison Faulkner and this is Ray Shane.